childhood was always a, a big fan of the big bands. You know, he used to talk to me and play me uh, 78s and 33s of the Glenn Miller Orchestra and Artie Shaw and Tommy Dorsey. We'd listen to this and he'd talk to me about it. And, and uh, I guess, you know, getting into the, the end of the 60s, you know, I had a feeling saying, you know, is there any sort of an opportunity to have that kind of performers coming to Montreal? And it was a different time then. You couldn't just push Glenn Miller into your computer and have a Google search up. It just wasn't there. I contacted an agency in New York called uh, Willard Alexander Agency. Uh, got involved on the phone with uh, Bob Cashaw, who was an agent representing Eastern Canada. I was concerned about my age, you know, because I was still a teenager, and based on what I was seeing uh, in, in books and, and talking to people that most uh, promoters were, were in their 40s, 50s, and 60s, and, and here I wasn't 20 yet, and found out information uh, on what's available. You know, there was Selworth of Pelche. I knew it had 2,963 seats, and it's enough, and I got all the information on the hall. And uh, I, I said, look, I'm going to take a shot. So I put together all the money that I had, and I booked my first concert, uh, December 11th, 1969, and I brought in uh, Dizzy Gillespie and Gene Krupa to Place des Arts. And uh, I confirmed the hall, I confirmed the performer, I got in touch with media, booked advertising, made flyers, posters, and now I was an impresario. Uh, the show worked very well. Uh, I sold about two-thirds of the tickets, and uh, as that show was selling, you know, I said, well, let me continue with this here. So well before this show was to take place, I booked my second show, which is January 12th, 1970, uh, and I booked the Glenn Miller Orchestra with Jackie Mason, and tickets for that show sold out even before my Dizzy Gillespie and Gene Cooper show took place. So I'm saying, wow, this is incredible. I mean, oof, this is like we're flying. So that really where it all started. Um, I got really involved when, when Dizzy Gillespie and Gene Krupa came to Montreal. Of course, I picked them up at the airport, took them to the hotel, got to spend time with them, went to restaurants with them, learned a lot about the history of the whole big band era. And it was fascinating because all that had happened during the war era. There was so much that I was learning about life and musicians and and. Uh, this was really something like spectacular to me. I then proceeded a few months later to do another concert, which was Buddy Rich and Woody Herman, and then we had some problems. Uh, on a positive side, I sold out the whole show, all 2,963 tickets. The show was on a Sunday evening. On Saturday noon, I got a call from a gentleman who advised me that he was Buddy Rich's manager, and he said, Mr. Kagan, I'm calling to tell you I have bad news. Buddy Rich slipped his disc last night on Johnny Carson's show during rehearsal, and I'm sorry he's not coming to Montreal tomorrow. I said, what? What are, we, what are you talking about? You, you can't. Uh, hold on a second. Don't get off the phone. What do I do? I've got a sold-out show. So that was, like, incredible because I'm still a kid, and now... I'm saying, wow, what's going to happen tomorrow night? I mean, what do I do? I, you know, I, I've got one of the acts, not the other act. I mean, can, I can't cancel the show. Uh, I can't even let the public know about what's happened because, you know, I can't even reach a radio station. You know, every, it's Saturday. There's, like, nothing to do. So I said, let's take a chance. I sent a good friend of mine to New York, got him onto a plane two hours later, and I said, let's see what we can do. So Bob headed off to New York and called me uh, close to supper time that day and said, look, Sheldon, I'm, I'm with this performer. Um, he's, a, he's a new and upcoming performer. Uh, he's willing to come to Montreal, and, and he's willing to come to Montreal for $1,500. Uh, I knew this performer's name. The performer was George Benson. George had played the Village Vanguard in New York on Saturday, so Sunday morning, I guess they got up. We had rented a station wagon, brought George Benson and his three players, three musicians to Montreal. Uh, I was going to take care of all the instruments. So he said, well, I'm coming with my guitar, but I need this amplifier, I need this bass, I need these drums. I said, okay. So everything was all set. They came to Montreal, put him up in a hotel, rushed him over to Place des Arts, and I now had George Benson and Woody Herman. So I got out, and 
did the welcome to all the guests at Place des Arts, as I always do. And I explained to them, I said, look, i got to tell you what happened. I heard from Buddy Rich's manager. I've got this incredible new artist who's come in from New York to be here with Woody Herman, who's here. Uh, however, I've made arrangements at the box office. Should you want a refund, please go down and you'll get your refund. Forty percent of the people took refunds, which I understand. If they wanted to see Betty Rich, you know, they're entitled to it. In the end, it still worked out very well for me because, of course, I paid George Benson much less at that time than I paid Buddy Rich. A year later, George Benson was now a superstar. When I called his agent that time to book him for Montreal, it was like, Sheldon who? Yeah, we'd love to come back again, but we now want $125,000. Even today, so many years later, I bump into people that say, God, Sheldon, I can't believe that concert I came to where you introduced us to George Benson. It was one of the best concerts we've seen in our life.